Hello, everyone. Just a quick word from your friendly editor slash husband. For all of you who listen to So I'm Watching This Show and own an Android device, do me a favor. Go to the Google Play Store and download the Podcast Republic app. It's a fantastic app that allows you to get all of your favorite podcasts directly on your Android devices. I use the app and love it. I can search for the podcasts I want to listen to, select them as favorites, and have them all just a click away. Make sure you set so I'm watching the show as a favorite so you don't miss any new episodes. Again, the app is Podcast Republic, available on your Android device. Thanks! As I've mentioned a few times, I have recently moved in with my brother, Mm -hmm. and... It's like all coming back to me. (laughs) (laughs) We lived together for a long time for like the first 10 years, like my 20s, basically. Yeah. For better and worse. But um, did you try to get you another sandwich? No, no, no. Well, (laughs) no, Uh, this is his friend. He has a friend. I can say his name, Brandon. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it was the night. Remember a couple days ago I was hungover. It was Mm -hmm. the night before. uh, So we were hanging out being being bros you know <laughs> and so i needed some sparkling cider to go with my <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> not spider like seltzer yeah. to go with my uh uh alcohol and so i asked andrew to pick some up on the way home and i was like Lacroix, bubbly whatever just something sparkling and because you know my rule of thumb especially if someone's getting like a flavor that they don't know is stick with red yeah okay i think <laughs> you did tell me this i didn't I okay. promise. <laughs> it sounds very familiar. Okay. It was like stick with reds. Uh, so he passed it on to his friend Brandon because Brandon was going to the store anyways. Okay. And so Brandon, a 31 year old man, married man, walks mm-hmm. into the house, not with LaCroix or Bubbly or even like Perrier or something. He walks in with Pedialyte because <laughs> it was sparkly and pink. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Brandon. He was so proud of himself too. He got three bottles. Oh my and he god. Was like, did I did I fuck it up? He was like, did I he said you wanted something sparkly? He was like, it was the only bottle that was kind of like shimmery. And I was like, oh my god. Hilarious. <laughs> So that's what you get with straight men. Uh, wow. Wow. Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. And I resent the moniker straight men on behalf of my husband because he would never <laughs> bring home Pedialyte really to like, mix with my alcohol. It, I think it was like electrolyte. Like, I don't think it was Pedialyte, but it was basically, there was so much sodium. Andrew was like, you just get Gatorade. Like, that would have been better. Yeah, or just, like, juice. <laughs> just, like, straight up juice. So, wow. He was very, very proud of himself, but I like that Brandon. Is That's not. <laughs> hysterical. No, no, he's great. I like him, too, but wow. <laughs> he's going to be making some shirts for us. Yes, he is. Which you guys will see in a little bit. <laughs> so we'll see what they look like, I guess. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is So I'm Watching This Show. On today's episode, we're going to have a little conversation about the movie Gretel and Hansel. And you know I named my file Gretel and Hans Will. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's funny because all I can think about is Zoolander. <laughs> I saw that gif on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> but he's like he's like a child in this no, one. No, I know, obviously, but all every time I hear the name Hansel, all I can think of is he's so hot right now. There's not a ton to talk about. There's some stuff and so I might do a fair amount of fairy tale esque rip riffing, but mm-hmm. it is this movie, it's a new movie, Gretel and Hansel, directed by Oz Perkins, which I Anthony guess, Hopkins or Anthony Perkins' son. Oh. Yeah, like um, Norman looks, Bates. Yeah, he's cute. He looks like him. Uh, he mm-hmm. acts, apparently, not a ton, though. And now he's in writing and directing. And while not a slam dunk, I'm strangely very impressed. We talk a lot about how January and, and even February is kind of first quarter is considered a dumping ground for movies. Yeah. It's either movies that are that the studio knows are bad or or gambles, or sometimes it's like a test ground for like an up and coming star to try out something, you know? Oh my God, he's the guy from Legally Blonde. 
which one? The cute dorky one. Oh, yeah. Okay. That is okay. Huh. Huh. Okay. I'm all there now. Okay. Wow. Are you okay? I had no idea that guy was Anthony Perkins' son. Hysterical. Okay. I'm good. Let's continue. So, yes, January is a dumping ground generally. Well, I and I said, and it's sort of like a test market for like low stakes projects, like for for yeah. for an up and coming star to test out a new, well, to see if they can open a movie and stuff. And sure. so, especially over time, it's like we still go see these movies in January because every so often, I would say like one out of every four ends up being watchable, and certainly yeah. one out of every five ends up being good. So, yeah, I can get behind that. I was really into this immediately it's very much my brand and i thought it was our brand but you were very hesitant going into this like you just didn't even have it on the list <laughs> no i did not have it on the list you were like we should get gretel and hansel on the on the schedule and i was like why it looks disgusting like i thought it was gonna be like hard disgusting like gore yeah, because she was, especially when she was like pulling, because it doesn't even look like hair in the trailer. It looks like twine, like a ball of twine. Mm -hmm. And I, so I just, she's pulling it out of her mouth. And I just was like, this is going to be horrific. I'm like, not interested at all. And you were like, no, I think we should see it. And I was like, I mean, okay. I And so I put it on the schedule. And then like three days ago, you were like, it's PG-13. And I was like, well, God damn it. So like, <laughs> what, am I, what am I even going to go watch? What like, is even the point of this? <laughs> it's not going to be even gross. And I was like, I can't imagine how scary it will be being only PG-13. And I was like, well, whatever, I guess. And I did maybe because my expectations were very low, but I ended up mostly enjoying it. It was definitely not my favorite. In fact, Will and I were talking in the car on the way home and I, for for January movies so far, yeah, my husband, for January movies so far, I really preferred Underwater, but I didn't hate it. Okay. And it, it has a very clear aesthetic, which goes a long way to like immersing me in the movie. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I think it really succeeded in the aesthetic. But beyond that, I think it was it was trying to update a fairy tale while making it a little bit more modern and like feminist, which is very interesting. But I think it didn't fully stick that landing. OK, you brought up like four different talking points. So I'm trying to think mm -hmm. of where where I want to go. I tend to do that and I apologize. <laughs> I was into it on the aesthetic and I got enough just from the aesthetic choices, particularly the cottage mm -hmm. and the fact that I realized she had more than one look, like more than mm -hmm. one costume. Those were the ways that I kind of keyed into the fact that it wasn't going to be a gore fest. Sure. If it was, I think the architecture would have been hackier. Yes. And, and there was there was so much style that I was like, I think this is going to be I was a little bit shocked it wasn't an A24 film. And that's what a lot of people are saying. It's kind of like an A24 light. Yeah. And instead it was by Orion. Yeah. Uh, I looked. <laughs> they are back again. They primarily do TV now. It was in 2013. They okay. came back and started doing TV. But it, they, been, it could be cool just for funsies if they like updated their graphic. I couldn't because I it was the first thing I thought, too. And I was like, I don't know. Is it so uncool that it's cool? Like, it's not even that it's uncool. It just looks old. Yeah. But I was like, is that almost <laughs> does that almost make it, you know, now it's retro. <laughs> yeah. I just think there's a lot you could do with Orion. And of course, yeah. you know, I'm imagining like a hot naked guy painted silver or something. <laughs> sure. Why not? So, uh, so so going in. I was really kind of like, OK, this is either going to be like really good or awful. Like I was expecting the Rotten Tomatoes to be like 90 or 15. Like sure, I really okay. didn't expect anything in between. And to my surprise, I checked it on like Friday mm -hmm. or Thursday and it was like at a 62, which I felt confident in. It's since gone down to a 56, which I think is is OK. I think it's fresh. I would have let it be fresh, but I did see that there was a, a, there's a great divide. There's a great debate because like the audience score is like 12. Mm. And so I think a large chunk of people are going to go into this expecting a January dump horror film. And sure. I think they want jump scares and probably the movie you didn't want to see is what I think a well, lot of people. Yeah, I mean, and there I, it got me a couple of times like 
I jump scared like two or three times Mm -hmm. because something just like happens very quickly. But it was it was a really a lot quieter of a movie than I thought it was going to be. So quiet because I was fidgety. Yeah. And my like. (laughs) Yeah. No, me too. And I mean, I told uh, also in the car with my husband, I was like. Honestly, I was like, I, it's not that I was bored, but like it was so quiet and so like meticulous, I guess, that a couple of times I was like actively falling asleep in my theater chair. I was too. Uh, they had the heat on. Did they? Yeah. And it is 60 degrees outside. No, they did. I could feel it. And I was like, Unbelievable. Oh, no, because I actually, yeah, I got home and was like, I need just shorts and a tank top. Yeah. And so I kind of felt myself nodding and. I will go ahead and say for people, for for me, this is the kind of thing that I'm like, I feel like you're not listening to this to figure out if you should go see it. It's like you Mm -hmm. already know if you're going to see this or not. Like, I don't think anything we say, but I mean, even the people who have liked it the most have flat out said it's boring. I can't. I don't know. I can't in good conscience say it was boring. Not the whole time, but definitely in the middle. It's like. This was 45 minutes of story stretched out into like 88 or 89 minutes. And that is true, which is something else that Will said, which is that it feels like they had something and it was too long for a short, but it wasn't long enough for a feature. So they padded it with like 30 or 40 extra minutes. And it was like not even 90 minutes. It's 87 minutes long. Mm -hmm. What I wish it was, because we've we've talked about this a few times and I think the timing couldn't be more perfect. But Mm -hmm. in the 80s, there was a show on Showtime called Fairy Tale Theater. Yeah. Shelley Duvall created it and starred in many of it. And it had A list and B list actors and directors of the time. Mm -hmm. And they would act out these at the time pretty, pretty cutting edge or pretty state of the art. uh, Yeah. I remember they were awesome. Yeah. Productions of fairy tales. And they ran between 40 and 60 minutes. And to me, I'm like, let's relaunch. And I guess because Shelley Duvall isn't really around anymore that's maybe yeah, but one anybody of the reasons else could take it but yeah i'm like let's relaunch fairy tale theater and this should have been that yeah yeah i i tend to really agree with that because like i said while i i could not in good conscience call it boring i it there was padding that didn't necessarily need to be there and i mean hella props for like making like an atmosphere like i i felt where we were yeah. i was like i would felt the confusion and the like just offness that that Gretel and Hansel felt I felt all of that it was very parts of it were so well done but that made the parts that didn't work for me more glaring I mostly just loved it I I can't imagine it's something that I would watch a lot yeah like I I, I don't like I'm good you know like I feel like I would watch it with people who haven't seen it if someone's like into that sort of thing because it gave it gave me the fall vibes, and I think uh, there's there's infinitely more to mine in the fall than there is yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. But it's like a lot of people when they watch that movie the first time, they're like that boring movie with the visuals. Okay, yes, I it, that in in that sense, I can agree with you that it's kind of like the fall. Well, and even the cinematography. Uh, yeah, I can see that too. I just think because of the things there, there were they were trying to say a lot of things about women and the power of women and the like witchy powerful nature of being female Mm -hmm. i dig that i i would love to explore stuff like that and i like how the ending was a little open-ended as well with like she was trying to be good and her finger still turned black like a witch you know it's like interesting but that's the stuff i feel like they didn't totally stick the landing because it I feel like they were trying to say more than can be contained in this specific fairy tale. Like I think well, Maleficent with stuck these, that landing better than this. Yeah, certainly with these parameters with three e- characters in one location. Right, I mean exactly because they added stuff that I thought was necessary and welcome. And I I mean I, I'm reluctant to say I wish there was more. But yeah, that's the thing is I I also can't I I can't say that I wanted them to go harder. It just is like maybe this wasn't the movie to tackle that. Okay. I I'm just not sure. It's like I know that there were things I didn't love about it, but I can't I can't decide how to tell them to fix it. You know what I mean? Well, I I think like we said just an hour. Yeah. Oh I yeah. I think an hour was plenty. 
But I think there is something interesting about the atmosphere, about the tension, because, mm-hmm. OK, f- the fatal flaw for me is that there was because this is a fairy tale that literally everybody knows there was no tension because right. I knew what we were building towards. Like, so, we all know they're going to put they're going to cook the witch. You I know? mean, I assume <laughs> the whole time I was watching this going, so are they going to do it or not? And so yeah. I think were this an original story done exactly this way i think Mm -hmm. we would have been riveted but because we know what exactly we're building to and and that's where the witchy stuff and the feminism stuff comes in where it's like i think that did that got us certainly halfway there to being worth worth it to being you know worth sticking the movie out yeah but i i agree with you i think if it were an original thing and it would and you put even a little like a scotch more focus on gretel's confliction about like sh- because she's like oh that's this power i want this power it's very it's very tempting it's very interesting but she can't without her brother and so it's like again i, I agree with you i think if it didn't have the constraints of being hansel and gretel i think a lot of that stuff would have landed a little better mm-hmm. yeah like almost i well i was gonna say i wonder if adding kids to it but i don't know I, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, honestly, at at a certain point, I kind of it's like add another child or take away the brother. No, 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 you know, no, but no. It, but it's it, that's the thing It's like you can't I can't be sure what would work. Well, because uh, I was kind of going my my mind because I, w- I was being me and I was looking for other fairy tale characters because when we had the huntsman, part of me was like. Let's yeah. get a wolf and Red Riding Hood in here somewhere or something sure. t- to that end. And and so then my mind is going to this like Marvel franchise shared universe yeah. like fairy tale <laughs> world where I'm like, th- that could be really interesting. But it I think there is absolutely 100 percent an, an, an audience for this. Yeah. I just don't know that they're going to find it. No, although it's only budgeted at five million. So, yeah, that's what Will said. I don't think it's going to lose a lot of money. No, I don't think it's going to make a lot of money. But it, yeah, it just it's one of those things, again, that I it's so it's so tough to talk about because it and it feels like we're saying it about so many movies. But like it wasn't marketed right. I think like, this was marketed. I, I, I'm i fine with the marketing for this. I well, I'm fine with the marketing for it. But to me, the marketing felt a lot more like this was going to be a hardcore scary horror movie and it was really a lot more intentional than that Mm -hmm. and that's i think i think that would be why people don't i mean that's gonna be why the people who do go see it are disappointed yeah but i think it's also why people aren't gonna go see it Mm -hmm. one of the things i actually super super loved about it is that it kind of existed outside of time and and space yeah that was cool there was nothing about it that screamed europe other than an assumption but it had the village and the witch vibes to me. So part of me, I was like, it could be America, America's or something to that effect. Yeah, and the yeah. architecture of the house was so modern mm-hmm. and so stark. And the house just wasn't functional at all <laughs> <laughs> to a way that that I enjoyed, you know, mm-hmm. and, and the weird basement was so interesting. And mm-hmm. you mentioned kind of something about the end, but it was vague enough. Mm-hmm. That I think it was fine. I was going to say, we didn't really talk about spoilers. And so if there were spoilers, I was going to go into it now. It, it does follow the story. She, yeah. the witch played by Alice Krieg, who is apparently one of my favorites. And I only now figured that <laughs> only out. Only just realized. Within the past year, figured out how much I love her. She's the Borg queen from what is, is that Babylon? I don't think it's Star Trek. Uh, I have no idea. I'm familiar with like a handful of these characters and concept apparently jerry ryan is in picard well she was in next generation yeah or i was something, like yeah i like was like oh man i want to watch that and i was like i would have to watch next generation first so much and yeah. then get <laughs> cbs all access and uh and i refused i would rather die um <laughs> but she was the witch and so and also i mean i think it was it i think this was a good move for sophia lillis because it's like mm-hmm. she's buzzy and it's like this this is just a good kind of medium in between role you know what yeah, i mean for sure and um apparently she's like 16 and i keep saying this but i was like i have no concept of what a teenager is anymore she's still 16 oh well, i guess gretel is meant to be 16 and oh, okay 
I was like, I'd have guessed like 12. <laughs> like, I have no. So Sophia Lillis will be 18 in February. OK, I kind I wish her hair was different at the end. Like, I wish it was kind of slicked back or something. Mm-hmm. I, I like, yeah, or something. And and I liked the attempts at mythos. That's where we go. OK, if, if we were going to draw this out, there needed to be more about the mythology because we're introduced to the movie with like a fairy tale about a little girl who was sick and an enchantress, you know, healed her. But then it made mm-hmm. her evil and it come it does come back in the end. But they didn't answer who the three women in the woods were. Yeah, I, I don't. That was all very. Uh, it was very unreliable. I couldn't decide if like Gretel was actually just seeing things or if they were just sort of like spirits or something. I yeah, I agree. I it was a little strange and that's this that's the sort of stuff where I I either am like remove that and make it an hour or add more and make it 2 hours. Mhm. We get a couple glimpses of the witch when she's by herself and she's actually young and beautiful and there was mm-hmm. a part of me that was like, "Well, this is a twist." Because yeah. usually it's the other way around. Mm-hmm. And she does explain it at the end of the movie that she that she did make herself appear older and more frail. It was as a tactic to be more trustworthy. Yeah. And this is rated PG-13, but there's a part of me that I'm kind of like, was it? Because <laughs> there's a handful of things. I guess there's not a lot of like blood, but there is a couple of scenes where I was like, that's viscera. And yeah. I mean, maybe they should have leaned into that. Like, maybe they should have leaned into the the femininity and the sexuality a little bit more. Because I, I, I originally proposed doing this with a 90s movie called Snow White, Tale of Terror mm-hmm. and or the 2009, like Red Riding Hood. And we just didn't have the time. So we're not going to we'll get to them at some point. But yeah. It's it's kind of thing where it's like the the Red Riding Hood is one of the movies that I think would have benefited from an R rating. And mm-hmm. thinking about it now, I wonder if this would have been better, a little gorier and a little bit more adult because it's actually very adult. I mean, that whole conversation, it's implied. But when she goes to the whorehouse, it's like, yeah. Ugh. So I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe that would have earned some of its. Yeah, I don't know. And I, I liked when you compared it to The Witch because I was getting vibes like that, too, especially with the weird architecture and the woods and, you know, the. Uh, isolation and everything and i mean i literally was just waiting for a goat to ask her if she would like to live deliciously Mm -hmm. in the woods but i think we we really hit it with the fact that the fact that we know the story is is where it doesn't work because that is i would totally agree because i think that is why something like the witch does work is because even if it is folklore it's so old that it's not told to people anymore or it's like so general as to just be like a religious girl is being tempted by the devil and that's mm-hmm. like broad enough to do whatever you want with it. And this is too specific. Cause if I didn't know what we were building to, I actually would have been, pretty, I could, I could for sure co-sign that pretty nerve wracked. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I liked it. Uh, yeah, I liked it. So I didn't not like it. So <laughs> that's and I what would I got like to see more of this. It's like, I'm excited yeah. for, the creepy goth kids and Renaissance fair kids and stuff, people who get to stumble upon this in 10, 20 years. Cause, mm-hmm. it, uh, cause another thing I was going to mildly compare it to was legend. It's like, okay. it wasn't particularly good, but it like was interesting and yeah. a very strange use of score. Yeah. It was very, it, it reminded me a lot of stranger things. Yeah. Yeah. And if there were more, if it was more dynamic, I would I, I would really stand by that comparison. But mm-hmm. I just yeah, I, I really I, I really do want more of this. And I I mean, we'll get it because these are as old as time, you know, mm-hmm. tales old as time stories. But I just don't think it's going to be the breakout hit it would need to be to spawn <laughs> an empire. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I and I. I do think that, that movies like this, you know, I had, you know, a dozen movies similar to this when I was growing up that I felt were only me. Mm-hmm. Like I was the only one that liked them. And it is those movies more than other movies, like more than big movies, like more than Marvel movies where like, that if shape. I find another person who loved that movie, mm-hmm. I feel an immediate kinship with them as opposed to like where it's like, Oh my God. Yeah. I like, I really liked Avengers 
you know, the well, first Avengers kinda, movie. And they're just like, yeah, me too. And it's like not a special thing to have in common. They kind of shape who you are. It's like, I yeah. am who I am in part because I liked the Adventures of Baron Munchausen when I was 10. Sure. You yeah. And I mean, mean to, to go with like another one, it's like that stupid movie that I love so much with Sarah Michelle Gellar called Simply Irresistible. Like, mm-hmm. I can't even tell you how many times I've watched that. But it's like when I meet someone else who's watched that movie, I'm just like, oh, yeah, you're my person. And it's this movie is going to be like that for mm-hmm. people. OK, cool. Um, well, yeah, that was a little bit brisker, but we are very busy at the moment. <laughs> We're very messed up. We <laughs> Lots of stuff of our coming down the pipe. Yeah. Did we make it to the theater this weekend? So, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, um, I guess if you go see Gretel and Hansel, let us know what you thought about it. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, at So I'm Watching, or Instagram, at So I'm Watching the Show. Uh, we are also releasing weekly episodes of uh, talking about Riverdale on our Patreon, uh, which links out from our website, SoImWatching.com. Other than that, you can rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen. And that's it for us. Bye. Bye. Bye.